Welcome everybody to another edition of Coach's Corner. With me today is uh, Steve Levinsky, Mounties Football Manager. Welcome Steve. Thanks Mick. Um, Steve, season's halfway through. Uh, looking ahead to next season, when do you start planning for next season, for, for the 2018 season? Um, we're already underway in that process. Um, yep. We've already started signing players and in negotiations with players. Um, we're also in talks with Canberra in relation to the new uh, structures the next year with the under 20s. Um, yet to be finalised, but we're already underway in that process. So um, we'll be doing that in the in the next couple of months. We go forward from that, but yeah, that's when we're underway. Okay. So obviously, it's a, it's a big shift with all all three grades and, and potentially bringing other grades in. So um, so you, you'd start obviously you start well before. Yeah, the, the season finishes. The yeah, and it's like any any job that you, you have your planning in, in place, and um, we've got our processes here that we use um, in relation to buying players. So um, once we do that, then we get the we we have a planning meeting with our uh, high performance staff and, and the coaches. Uh, once we do that, then we move forward into the next year. So it's an ongoing job where you're, you're always thinking about the year after or the or the next year. So okay. So what are the challenges? that you face um, <laughs> signing new players. So given that we've got the uh, you know, point system in, in Massey Cup and Sydney Shield and you haven't got that in um, New South Wales Cup, how do you manage the balance of players between those grades? Um, it, it's good. We, we've always got that pathway here. So signing players, it, it's it's pretty easy for us. When I say easy, we've got the Canberra Raiders as the pathway. So that's, that's the big carrot that we have here. Um, and we've got good systems in place here. So... Um, everything that we do here is based on trying to uh, make players progress to the new level of NRL and coming into ISP. So it's it's the systems there are, are in place. So we're happy to you know offer that and you know provide a pathway from our juniors right through to ISP, Ron Massey. Okay. And you spoke about those systems and processes. So can you give us a bit of an idea of how how you go about that? Do you do you have a, a like a, a, a set of gaps that you have to fill, or do you look for potential like individual players with their uh, in terms of their potential or their skill level? Um, what are you looking for? We sit down with the Canberra Recruitment and Retention Committee, and they give us what they've got down there, um, and then we work backwards from that. We with obviously Steve, Steve Antonelli, and um, so what we do, we look at the players in positions. Firstly, with Canberra, they might send us so many players back and then we just fill those holes in the ISP system and then we go back through Ron Massey and Sydney Shield. Okay. And for you, uh, start of the season is always very hectic and then there's always a, a period of, uh, I guess, the player movement up to June 30 and then obviously you get after that into the final series which is always, again, if you're good enough to make it, it's always a bit hectic. What's the most anxious part of the season for you? For me, it's every Saturday, as we alluded to. Um, yeah, there's just being a, a club that we've got the, the links with Canberra, you always want to be that club that's, uh, you know, participates in, in the semi final. So every every side from Massey, um, the Shield, and the ISP, and even, and even the ladies' teams, we want them in the top four every year, um, and we want them to compete in the finals. Um, so, you know, when you get around that time of semis, you're always anxious to make sure your team's. Get that second second bite of the cherry and um, play semi final football. So yeah, it's a bit of pressure on the club. Um, you know, having that status of a good club with all all four teams last year getting in minor premiers and, and, and in, in grand finals. But um, yeah, so it's all around anxious for me to be honest. Okay, and uh, you mentioned the ladies teams. Uh, we've increased them to two uh, this year. Where do you see the future? of the women's competitions? Yeah, the, the, the ladies, are, I think in the next three to five years, it's going to be you know, as big as the men. So we're trying to get ahead of you know, other clubs and you know, we've got, we went from one side to two sides now and we're trying to put the, you know, the exact processes in place that we've got with the men um, where the, there is a pathway to, to play mm. state of origin for the, for the girls and also the Gillaroo. So um, yeah, I think it's going to be bigger and it's always going to be a part of our club. Um, what are the values? Uh, we talk about values a lot in rugby league. What are the values um, 
which have made this club successful? What, what are your do your values align with the, the club, or do you sacrifice your values for the club? So how does that work? Just in terms of players and staff, we sort of we, we know, you know, when we talk to players, their ability you're not going to doubt their ability if it, they're being pushed by managers and and outside sources, but. The, the first thing I, I want in the club that it's a good person. They're going to fit into our culture and systems, and um, you know if they can fit into our um, systems here and you know be a good person off the field, you know they're going to be good on the field. So one of our biggest qualities here, we want we want good people at our club and um, and good staff to complement that, and that's that's half the battle. If you, you've got a good person, then you know, they've obviously got the talent to play football. Mm. So do you, do you specifically look to see if the character of the person fits or matches the character of the club? Oh, 100%, yeah. yeah. That's one thing, because you, you, you'd rather have people that want to be at our club and are going to toe the line and be in that uh, system, because you go through tough tough times and you, you want those players to be part of that um, group and be part of that um, passion of your club. And if they don't want to be part of that, you, you know, it's hard for them to fit in. So it, that's our big, it's my biggest point, like I know our coaches and the recruitment staff, they always give us who, you know, the players, what they are, ability-wise on the field, but, you know, you need to do some checks off it because you don't want to upset, you know, 30 players to make one person happy. So it's a big, big thing of mine to get um, the right people in the club. Yeah, and I suppose it's a two-way street because we've seen the likes of Clay Priest and, and now Royce Hunt go through the system uh, and play NRL. So I guess it's a... It's a a two-way street in that respect that uh, you know the, the club's character fits theirs and, and vice versa. Yeah and that, that's a proud point of our club that we've had Royce Hunt and uh, Clay Priest and uh, Scott Sorensen and Eddie Iona go down into that system where uh, they are full-time and you know it indicates here that there is a pathway from Mounties to the Raiders um, and we're pretty proud of that as a club and you know and that's you know we picked out good people there and obviously Canberra's seen that they are good people off the field but even better on the field so it's something we've really worked hard on and I think you know we're getting the results that way. Okay and uh, without revealing too much what have you got on the drawing board for next season we've spoken about briefly we've touched on the under 20s uh, that comp finishes this year what can you tell us about the structure of that for next year? We're still in talks with Canberra about the under 20s and, and the league. The league haven't really um, agreed to the structures and, and funding. Once that's done, we'll sit down with Canberra and um, discuss how we're going to um, move with the 20s if we go down that path, if we, you know, if we may do, we may not. Um, and then we'll work out the rest of the competitions at the club. But um, we're still in that process at the moment, but it's not far off of being um, told by the, the league. But once we do that, then we can sit down and start recruiting and moving forward. Okay. Well, it certainly is a big ship uh, to steer and we're heading in the right direction, I, I believe. So thank you, Steve Levitsky, for, uh, for your time this afternoon. Thanks to Richmond Residential for your ongoing support.